Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Jolie and today is October 3rd. So we're going to read from Alan on literature today, Hope for Today, Courage to Change, and One Day at a Time in Alan on. So let's get started. Thanks for coming. Really happy to be here. Grateful. Grateful, grateful. Feels good. Feels good to know that I'm going to be reading something. <laughs> reading something that's worthwhile, something that can penetrate this mind, you know, the mind of the person, the people uh, that are uh, affected by the disease of alcoholism and addiction. Some of us grew up that way. Some of us had that happen to um, in our lives when um, we had partners or, um, yeah. So it's it's a thinking dis disease and, um, and uh, where there's that, um, we get distorted uh, thinking because we get a little bit, um, we get irritated or we get codependent because we're trying to help or fix others. Right, and um, our lives sometimes become unmanageable because of that. Because we're, we're um, you know, um, we tend to maybe exaggerate our troubles and they overwhelm us. So um, this uh, will hopefully work with um, uh, giving us some new ways of thinking about the difficulties that we have to face and put our, um, our problems or issues uh, into um, somewhat of a new perspective. Yeah, well, let's see what we have. The readings are meant to um, uh, uh, give stories and suggestions only um, and you can take what you need and you can throw out the rest, right? And um, I guess um, just for my own sake, when I'm willing to do the right thing, um, at least what I believe to be the right thing, then um, I can be rewarded with some inner peace when I'm willing to do the right thing. Um, um, I can do that, but if I'm not, then I can become more irritable, restless, discontent, and even insecure. Um, so that's just uh, possibly something that you can relate to. And um, let's see what the readings say today. So it'll be on page 277, all the readings, because that's cool like that, right? Because they are um, daily reflections and they just happen to all be on the same page, which is really super cool. So page 277 for uh, October 3rd, and I'll read Hope for Today first. Have you ever had the opportunity to watch preschoolers put together a puzzle? If a piece doesn't fit immediately, they often push and shove to make it fit, making lots of sound effects along the way. This is how I lived most of my life. I never felt like I fit in my alcoholic family or anywhere else. I felt like the puzzle piece in the preschooler's hand. Instead of forcing myself to fit, I forced those around me. I tried to manipulate and control everybody in my life to change the shape of their personalities to suit mine. I even attended workshops so I could make changes happen. My personal slogan became, I have to make things happen. My life was unchangeable. My life was unmanageable. So fortunately, I made it to Al-Anon before I wrecked the entire beautiful puzzle of my life. The program taught me first that there is nothing wrong with the way I'm shaped mentally, emotionally, physically, or spiritually. There's nothing wrong with other people's shapes either. There's nothing wrong with other people's shapes either. 
Then I learned that the only piece I can change is my own. I have choices now, instead of spending time with people in situations where I don't fit, I can look for the ones where I do. Regarding the puzzle of my family, I can't change the fact that I am a member who doesn't always fit. However, Al-Anon gives me tools such as detachment and the serenity prayer to use when I'm around family members and I can change what I can. And remember that this family gathering too shall pass. Soon I can move on to gatherings where I feel more comfortable. So my goal is not to change others to fit me. I aim to change myself to fit my higher powers will. And there's a quote from suggested Al Alanon Alateen Welcome, and it says, our thinking becomes distorted by trying to force solutions and we become irritable and unreasonable without knowing it. So cool. The aspects in the astrology even, um, interesting, interestingly enough, support that theme, the theme starting off with that same um, discussion. I don't know, like I was, I was, my higher power led me to start off with that discussion. Yeah, um, my slogan used to be um, like everything is fixable, which still refers to me now, but in a different way, not with the everyone is fixable. <laughs> everything can be fixable, you know, and without it being like a manipulating way, it's more like um, allowing, like I'll do the work that's necessary. And the results are not up to me. The results are up to my higher power and the world, really what's going on, the universe, um, the other people involved also, you know, like how is that gonna work? Um, and also I used to say um, uh, um, things like, yeah, when this is saying I have to make things happen, I was like, I need to, um, I'll figure it out. I will figure it out. Now I'm saying I, thy, thy, T-H-Y, thy will figure it out. <laughs> which is me and my higher power. It's like the third step prayer, you know, like working with my higher powers is, is really, yeah, and I don't, yeah, when our thinking becomes distorted, yes, when we have a relationship, when we have relationships with people who are codependent, you know, like if you, you're, if you grew up in a family with alcoholism, all the family members have been affected, right? So then there's, yeah, can you relate to that? So, right? So sometimes that the family members, we don't jive so well because, you know, we're still trying to fix other people or like, I could tell by the way you're looking, you have, you know, like, you know, like sisters and, and, um, sons, daughters, parents, you know, they're used to, um, they're used to the dynamic, the family dynamic of when we were growing up, right? So, and when you're changed, when you're changing, like you can still bring that in all, like in, into all of your affairs. So then you can pause and, you know, yeah, you're going to be triggered. Like this isn't like a magic potion here, it's, um, reading Alan on literature. There's, that's why members are here all the time. That's why we read this every day. To be able to live life on life's terms. Because life happens. And you know, like, it's not so, it's not 
you know, I was thinking, oh, wouldn't it be nice if everybody would just read these books? Come on, mom, come on, sister, come on. Kids, you know, everybody get into the Al-Anon with mom and, and daughter and it's not like that. It's not, so it's okay. It's okay not to be okay. So then we can have the meetings and the people in the meetings to go like, ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> That's why we have sponsors. Hi, how you doing? Yeah, you know, so then you, you don't exaggerate your troubles. You just say like, this is what's going on. They're like, you know, they'll offer you some slogans, you know, so that you can kind of get through it. So let's read one day at a time in Al-Anon and um, give it a like so that I know you guys are here and your comments are so awesome. Thank you. I love uh, having conversation. I feel like we're having conversation, you know, maybe one day I'll do like a live one. I think that would be kind of, kind of fun. One day, let me know if you think that would be fun. I'm not sure maybe when we're all done because we're almost through, we're almost through the year and then see what's gonna come up next. I'm gonna have to figure this out. Maybe we need to figure this out. So yeah, if you guys have any suggestions because it's October, right? So November, December, that's three months. We need to come up with some ideas of what to do next. All right, so let's read. So cheery, cheery platitudes are not much help to newcomers in really desperate straits. I don't know what that is. All right, so nor is the hearty attitude. Come on, snap out of it. Al-Anon will work wonders for you. <laughs> a wife and mother who has seen everything go down the drain, who has lived through losing her home, going on public relief, with a husband in an institution or a prison, oh boy, all those, may feel even farther removed from hope in a bright, optimistic circle of Al-Anon people who are on the way up. Boy, I can relate to that, can you? So such newcomers should select sponsors who can understand their problem and help them with patience, tact, to meet the challenge. So um, today's reminder, it is a spiritual experience to lead a desperate newcomer into a new point of view. We understand and um, we learn the subtle difference between pity and sympathetic understanding. Let me read that again. We learn the subtle difference between pity and sympathetic understanding. We do not flaunt our own success in Al-Anon. We let it speak for itself. A good sponsor keeps in touch, gently conveys the idea that it's always darkest just before dawn and gives a lift to the bruised ego. Hmm, I pray for the opportunity to help the hopeless. I will show, again, it will show me the way to share myself with someone in great need. Again, I pray for the opportunity to help the hopeless. It will show me the way to share myself with someone in great need. That's really a good reminder. Oh, yeah, we are not here to say, come on, snap out of it. Al-Anon will work wonders for you. No. I, Honestly, when I first came in, thought that that's, you know, because I was starting to feel better. And I was like, okay, now everybody else needs to do this in my life. So then I'll be okay. I was still not getting it. I was still not getting it. Like, and I'm still working on getting it. Just let me be clear to that. Oh boy, yeah, because when someone's really going down, like, I don't know, like, I, 
I can relate to a lot of what's going on uh, in that when I first came in because I just wanted I just I just wanted a place to go so that I didn't do other things that weren't really um, a good idea because I was really desperate I was um, I had felt like um, I kept having these ideas that I didn't need to be here anymore because I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure out what I was doing to cause all this misery in my life. And I realized that I'm like, no matter where I went, I'm with myself. So how does that, how do I fix that? And, um, someone had suggested Al-Anon and I didn't want to go because I was like, they won't know. I was angry. You know, I was restless, discontent, irritable and insecure because I was not willing. Uh, but there was something in me that I, cause I was, I felt trapped within myself. I was like, I don't know how, so let me see, let me just go to a meeting. And I actually went really early. It was an early morning meeting and I was early, like a half an hour early. And I was crying. I was, cause I was, I just know, you know, so I can, I can totally relate. And um, I don't want to ever forget that because I'm so grateful for this, um, for this opportunity and it only works if you work it. It only works if you are willing to do the right thing for yourself, you know, and, um, and then the results are up to your higher power. So if there's steps and there's some stability here and there's readings and encouragements, and like I said, take what you need and you could throw out the rest. You know, it's not like you have to listen to what I say. There's no, none of that. It's, there's none of that. All I know is that my family has shared with me, mainly my children, that they are proud of me and they are happy because they can see the difference. And I can see the difference in the way that I interact with them. And they're the most important in my life. So I'm really, truly, really happy about that. All things are lessons God would have me learn. And that is uh, lesson 193 today in A Course in Miracles. So in my other series, because I'm trying to work on my perception as well. So like, like the reading talked about, it's like working on shifting our perception about the difficulties we have to face and then allowing a higher power to come in and, and filter through our lives one day at a time. All right, so courage to change. Do you have courage? Well, it's something we can learn to, um, what did somebody say today? It's about a ladder. I liked it. It was, there was something, I wrote it down. Where is it? Where's that? I drew it. Oh, I drew it in the book, but it was about how the 12 steps are like a ladder that we have to climb. And I'm like, yeah, because like you have to make sure the ladder's stable, you know, and you have to also, it's safer when you climb the ladder. Yeah, I can climb a ladder on my own, but I'm, I am taking a bit of a risk, right? But if there's someone there that could kind of hold on to the ladder for me, you know, that's like our higher power the people in the group, you know, that have your back, a sponsor. So climbing the ladder, building a ladder. Yeah. All right, here we go. Courage to change, page 277. And at the end, we're going to say the serenity prayer. Maybe another prayer as well, but let's see for sure the serenity prayer. So clearly, I didn't know what compassion was, but I knew what it was not. Compassion was not seeking revenge, holding a grudge, calling names, or screaming and throwing things in anger. Yet, that was how I frequently behaved 
toward this person I claimed to love. For me, the beginning of learning compassion was to eliminate such behavior. While I still have a hard time defining compassion, I think it starts with the recognition that I am dealing with a sick person who sometimes exhibits symptoms of a disease. So I don't have to take it personally when these symptoms, such as verbal abuse, appear, nor do I have the right to punish anyone for being sick. I am a worthwhile human being. I don't have to sit and take abuse, but I have no right to dish it out either. So today's reminder, I will spend more time with myself in this lifetime than with anyone else. I'll say truth. Let me learn to be the kind of person I would like to have as a friend. Okay, so there's a quote from S.R. Hole. I don't know who that is. If you do, please leave it in the comments. I love when you guys help me with the research, so thank you. So it says, he who would have beautiful roses in his garden must have beautiful roses in his heart. I like, I like that one. I got a rose bush from some friends in the program, a beautiful couple. And I got the roses in memory of my beautiful stepmother. They asked me when, um, when I, when um, I had mentioned it in a meeting, you know, just was like, yeah, I just really miss her. And so I mentioned it and um, this beautiful couple, they're so cute and wise and they're always in the meeting together, like, cause in the Zoom meetings, so the little blocks and then they're like sitting next to each other. And I thought, oh, I always love them. And they always have so much to say. And, you know, they've been in the program for a long time. And um, they're actually the ones that um, uh, invited me to an open meeting for the other program. So they're like, they're, Anyway, they're really dear to my heart. So they said, you know, what would you like in memory of, of your stepmom? And I said, well, she always bought me purple roses. These beautiful purple roses for my birthday. I remember, I remember the first time I was just so honored and felt so loved, I don't know, beautiful. And it just was really special. And so I mentioned that and they bought, they bought me the memory gift, a rose bush. And they're like this really beautiful purple pink color. And I'm growing them. Right. So I'm growing them and I have the bush outside and I'm gonna take it with me and I'm just really grateful to have that. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. My life um, is uh, doing okay. Um, there's some ups and downs and ins and outs, but you know, like things like that really are meaningful. You know, rose bushes and and um, you know, so. How about you guys? How are you doing? Can you relate to the readings? And um, I'd love to hear what you have to say because I love reading the comments. They really, I look forward to that every day. And um, yes, serenity is my main goal today. And um, just see how I can do that. Just. Um, one moment at a time. All right, so let's say the serenity prayer and then I'll see you guys tomorrow. Please um, subscribe and share this channel with someone that you may think 
um, is looking for this, only if they're looking for this. We don't want to, um, you know, it's up to you. It's up to you in your life and how you want to do it. But yeah, I think um, it's, it's nice to know that um, we have this, right? It's good for me. And um, I'm grateful to hear that um, it's good for you guys too. So let's go, let's say the prayer and then we'll move on with our day, whatever time it is. So God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we can't change, to have the courage to change the things we can and the wisdom to know the difference. So God's will be done. And I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you. All right. Bye. Love you.